Hey guys, this is Mr. Stark again, and I just wanted to give you a quick video on one of the uh, kind of classroom stuff. There's no lab grade in semiconductors, but what you guys actually get in your student kit, part of your tuition, is you get a semiconductor kit, which is basically this plastic thing with a bunch of small semiconductor components inside of it. And there's a lot more to it than what I'm showing you, but what I wanted to go over was the basics of the lab that's in there. It's not really a lab, but it's more of a classroom hands-on thing. And obviously you guys will receive these kits at some point in the future. Uh, but what it, what it has is what we have a breadboard. That's what this is called, a breadboard. There's a box of wire jumpers because you have to jump the stuff out a little bit. There is a kit that all this comes in. Get some integrated circuit chips, some speakers, some switches, uh, capacitors, transistors, uh, little switches, a bunch of LEDs, more capacitors. Uh, over here, I've got I've got all the resistors organized by color code and size, and uh, that's something that you're going to have to go through when you get your kit. You may or may not want to play with it. But it's an interesting world to experiment with. But with that being said, if we come down here for the purpose of the lab is to get you to kind of understand a basic electronic circuit. But you got to understand how this breadboard works. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that there's a positive mark and a negative mark because we're using DC voltage typically with electronics. And this whole terminal in the back is positive all the way to where you can see I got my battery lead plugged in so red is positive the bottom terminal is negative so the black wire for the battery is plugged into the negative so if I plug in anywhere on this little bottom row all the way down to where it says negative I can receive the end of my circuit so to speak likewise exactly the same situation on the bottom all this is positive and all of this very bottom row is negative. Uh, if I plug in anywhere along this strip, I can receive the positive voltage from the battery, and I can bring my circuit back anywhere on this strip so long as that's plugged into it. On a similar note, each of these rows, and you can see how they're numbered. Here's row number one. You can see it right here. And then you skip a few, and then it goes up to 5, and then of course 10. These rows are in common with each other, which means if I put a wire jumper here, right in that little hole, there's actually a connection between this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. But that's it. They don't go left to right. So it's just these single rows are in common with each other all the way down. You'll notice how the circuit is designed. If I trace this out, I'm going to shift my camera here. I receive power from the battery on the positive terminal. It goes through this jumper wire. If you look really close, the end of my resistor, these are resistors, we'll talk about this, is in the same row as that jumper wire. So that means I'm taking that positive voltage and I'm going through this resistor. Resistors oppose the flow of current and typically when we hook up LEDs we need resistors in conjunction or in series with them to limit the current flow so the LED doesn't blow up. So this just happens to be a 330 ohm resistor. Just enough to slow the current down and then it comes back on this single row here. I could put this lead anywhere but I just wanted to put it in the same row. I'm hooked up to the positive side of the LED, which is the longer side. If I yank these out, I'll show you later. These LEDs have a short wire and a long wire. The, the uh, long wire is the positive side of the LED. These are polarity, polarity sensitive. And uh, we have to realize that if we put them in the wrong way, they won't work. So once again, the LED or the light emitting diode is in series with this resistor. Power then goes through the resistor and it comes off this other lead. 
which is the negative or the short lead. This lead is also in contact with this row where the red wire is. So that is then hooked up to this just jumper, doesn't matter what color. And I just made the jumper go over to the negative, which is that bottom row. And if we traced out that bottom row all the way back to the negative side of your power source. I'm going to put my camera down for a second so we can plug it in and I'll show you what I mean. And once again, it's a 9 volt source. You'll learn how to uh, limit the volts that actually goes through here. Typically these LEDs have a forward voltage of about 2 volts. So we'll, we'll do that math on another lesson. But what ends up happening is I have my voltage come through, once again, red wire, through the resistor. I'm limiting the amount of current that can actually go through that LED. LED is on. It's basically a simple circuit. Comes through that little wire jumper, back to my breadboard, back to the battery, and you'll see that the LED works. This is actually the first uh, lab that's in Moodle. Even though there's no lab grade, it's just something that we can play with in class. Uh, normally, what I like to do in my class is, you know, we'll introduce the breadboard, but I like to bring other components to solder and make really cool items. I'll show you that in another video. And because uh, soldering is a huge skill, which you'll know in your homework, because one of those is a uh, how to solder video. Uh, if you come back to Waterbury at some point in the future, we'll be soldering and making these parts. But for now, you're just going to have to uh, enjoy seeing this for what it is. Basically, simple light circuit. We have a positive negative. Positive leads the battery. Goes through the wire, through the resistor, through the LED. Back on that wire jumper and makes a complete circuit back to the source. And uh, that's it. So, one of many videos and hopefully you enjoyed this one. See you on the next one.